Hey everybody, it is late at night and I am Norman. It's about time for some more wristwatch news. So let us begin. The first article we'll be looking at comes from Deployant.com. And this is a review of the Perrin Nera Rogue. This is a dive watch that comes in at 39mm, it has a dark bezel, dark dial, and a nice matte finish case. And this watch retails for just $640. What do I think of this watch? I think it's absolutely brilliant. I love that dark dial, even though it's not so utilitarian. I love the batten style hands and those small square hour indices just look so great on this watch. And I feel like 39mm is a great size for a dive watch. I love the way the coin edge of the bezel angles in. That's a cool touch. And the wrist shots of this watch, absolutely brilliant looking. And that is a great price for a dive watch. It has 200 meters of water resistance. And just like the author of this article, I'm basing my opinion simply on pictures and what information is available online. And from what I've seen, this watch just looks awesome. The next article comes from Watch Pro Site. And this is an article discussing the world's most complicated clock. And finding out exactly what this clock does is a little bit difficult. I went to the website of the maker of the clock, and instead of listing all the features, there are just different links to the construction of different parts of the watch. But we do know that it has a calendar feature, the sunrise and I believe moon phase as well, and a Tellurian complication. What do I think of this? First off, I had no idea what a Tellurian complication is. And apparently it is an apparatus that shows how the movement of the Earth on its axis and around the sun causes day and night and the seasons. That's pretty cool. This clock is absolutely insane looking. When you look at shots of it from the back, it is so complicated, it just looks like a mess. But from the front, it looks like a crazy piece of art. I will have to scour through their website and gather together a list of all the things that this clock does, as well as take some clips of their videos and put together an entire episode on that clock, because it's absolutely nuts. The next article comes from WarnAndWound.com, and this was a piece discussing an Urwerk one-off watch. So one of the earliest watches that the brand put out was a piece called the 102. And to celebrate their 25th anniversary, they've decided to do a one-off new version of the 102. What do I think of this watch? As far as Urwerk standards go, it's nice and plain and minimalist. I like the matte finish on the case and the colors of the hours and minutes indicators in the upside down smiley face window look really great against that gray color. The complication that it features is their take on a wandering hour. I like the angular lugs and the overall look of this watch is great. While I admire pretty much every piece that Urwerk puts out, I do appreciate the minimalism of this one because their other watches can kind of be overwhelming and almost over-engineered looking. I'm pretty sure this watch has already sold. By now this article is a bit old. However, the starting bid for this watch was over $400,000. <laughs> Typical Urwerk. But yeah, I like the balance, this minimal watch in contrast to some of their overly complicated pieces. It's just sad, it's so expensive and it's only a one-off. I wonder who ended up buying it. The next article comes from the Crown and Caliber blog. And this is an interesting article on Rolex shortages. What's really great about this article is the author used hard numbers to support some of the theories that he was discussing. Usually when you hear discussions about Rolex shortages, it's more like conjecture or just reasoning out things. Like just assuming they're producing watches and yet holding them back from sale. Which always seems a little bit strange to me. To spend all this money producing watches only to not sell them. I mean, I understand creating demand and the prestige that follows that almost makes your watches mythical, but it does seem a bit odd. So what this author did was he took the last reliable bit of data that Rolex put out 
That was in 2015. After that, they stopped publishing sales numbers and stuff like that. So we looked at the supply side of the issue and took 2015. And he was contrasting that with 2021. Now to come up with the numbers for 2021, he had an interesting way of kind of roundabout determining what their sales were. You see, each Rolex is cost certified, and those are public record. So he looked at the number of certifications that were issued to Rolex, and used that as their sales number roughly. And the result is, they're producing 25% more watches now than they were in 2015. So then he took a look at the demand side. And for this side of the issue, he decided to get numbers on how many millionaires there are in the world assuming that most of those millionaires just might buy at least one Rolex. In order to get these numbers, he tried to stick to a single source. That way, maybe it'll be a bit more consistent. So he went with a CNBC article that stated that there were 33.7 million millionaires in the world as of 2014. And in 2021, there are 56 million millionaires in the world which is an increase of about 70%. So as he stated, if Rolex produces a million watches, that is only 1 56th of the demand for them. So clearly demand is outpacing production. And I feel like this isn't isolated to Rolex. I feel like this is prevalent throughout the watch world. I mean, just try and buy a watch off time factors or get your hands on a Corona Tokyo. So maybe Rolex isn't this evil golem hiding their watches off in a small storage room somewhere, only letting a few trickle out into 80s. The next article I have comes from Watchtime.com, and this is a review of the Nomos Ludwig 41 date watch. Nomos's Ludwig watches are so elegant, if you like dress watches with Roman numerals on them. And this watch comes in at about 40 and a half millimeters. What do I think of this watch? Well, I do like the Ludwigs. I'm okay with Roman numerals on dress watches. In some cases, they don't quite look right. But on the Ludwigs, they look great. The thing that I really like about this watch, though, is the date window. Have you gone mad? You hate date windows. Yes, but this date window, the numbers are indicated in Roman numerals. That is so clever and fun and almost funny. So cheers Nomos for making another brilliant decision. The next article I have comes from Hodinkee.com, and this is a discussion of fashion watches. Now the author makes a distinction between mall watches, which actually may not be sold at malls, but they're just cheap, mass-produced watches, versus watches that are produced by fashion brands, who may not necessarily have any history in watchmaking. And he's positing that it's about time to rethink fashion watches. What do I think of this? I find it interesting that most of the examples that he gives only sort of fall under fashion watches. He mentions Cartier being a jeweler, but Cartier watches are absolutely brilliant. He mentions a universal Genève Hermé piece, and most of the watches that he's talking about are high-end fashion watches. I feel like the beef that people have with fashion watches are more oriented towards stuff like Michael Kors watches, where they're uninspired, cheap watches that are overpriced, and really just made to be an accessory to clothing, and not something that you actually really appreciate. They're selling watches to non-watch people. I feel like that's the criticism against fashion watches. If a fashion brand is putting out watches that they clearly have their heart in, and clearly care about, and are passionate about, I feel like that's a bit different. But if it's clear that they're just producing watches so they can put them in a display case along with bracelets, rings, and tie clips, that's the problem with fashion watches. But I think he does bring up a good point because I find myself avoiding watches if they have a fashion name on them, even though they're kind of brilliant looking. I have some vintage searches, and every now and then a fashion brand's watch will come through, I've seen some Gucci watches that look absolutely phenomenal, and I scroll right past them because of the name that's on them. And of course, maybe they are garbage and just look great. I don't know. I may have to look into that because I may be missing out on some brilliant watches, for all I know. That will do it for the news at this point in time. 
Thanks for watching. Thank you.